Good morning, everybody. Howdy. Oh my goodness, we're getting inundated, but we love it. Yeah. There's so much going on and so much coming in, you know, especially over the memorial. Yes. And oh boy, have we got some things for you guys. Yes. Now, we before do. we get into <laughs> the special talk about how only Jehovah's Witnesses are the ones that are going to live forever. Oh no, oh no, no, that's, that's not true. See, you've got to be righteously inclined, you know, in order to survive Armageddon. I mean, this is what Jehovah's Witnesses tell you at the door. Those that are righteously inclined will survive Armageddon. Okay, so Jehovah's Witnesses, how are you going to explain this one now that they've come out, blatantly said it? And we'll show it in a few minutes. Here. And I hope it goes viral. Now, I'm going to post the link to this entire talk down below, because you can watch the whole thing if you want. Because this is the special talk for this the, was 20, the special 2019 talk memorial season. That they had last week. Be like the week before Easter. All right, now... This was really shocking to us, and that's why we played that clip at the beginning, because it ties in with what I'm about to bring up. I got an email this morning. We'll call him Tom. Thank you, sweetie. We really appreciate this information. Hi, Mike and Kim. I just wanted to let you know that I recently discovered that JWs are now hiring off-duty law enforcement <laughs> officers at a rate of $35 an hour to provide traffic control and security for the memorial celebration. I only know of one instance of this happening at the Kingdom Hall on Foster Meadow Road, and I'm not going to say what town, but it was in Texas. Um, I'm a law enforcement officer myself and saw the post on a Facebook page strictly for law enforcement officers who work side jobs. Mm -hmm. Now, even here in New Mexico, oh, yeah. you know, when they're off duty, they can take side jobs for security or, you know, anything like that. Some work at the school, you know, when they're off duty for the school enforcement officer, like where my daughter works. Okay i.e. traffic security the post was actually a hiring post for officers needed I have a screenshot of it um, and then he was asking for my email because he couldn't send files and pictures and stuff through our website okay um, now this is where the clip at the beginning ties in he goes what pisses me off is that the law enforcement SWAT teams and the military are depicted as the boogeyman coming after them and herding them into fields for slaughter, yet they hire off-duty law enforcement officers to protect them and do traffic control at the memorial. It's mind-boggling. Um, he says, and I look forward to watching. So thank you so much for sending us this information. And as you can see, I put the ad up. Now, the officer's name <laughs> is blacked out at the bottom for his protection because we're going to protect our sources no matter what. But it says off-duty for Church Kingdom Hall on Foster Meadows, uh, $35 per hour, uh, 1830 hours to 2230 hours cash slash check at the end of the night. Now, I wrote back and I asked him, I said, so are they going to be fully in uniformed, you know, <laughs> armed? Because... Inquiring minds have questions. You all know. I always have questions. And he writes back and he says, Yes, ma'am. The Facebook post was for off-duty law enforcement officers seeking employment while in full uniform to include duty belt and weapon. I didn't work the side job and I, I, I don't know who did as there are thousands of LE officers in Blank County Metroplex. Attached is the Facebook post requesting, and we just showed it, um, at the Kingdom Hall of Jehovah's Witnesses located on Forest Meadows Street in Blank, located within Blank County, Texas. The name um, of the LE officer has been scratched out for their protection. Um, now, what he says, you know, is correct. This should tick off the officers who are asked to protect them, you know, and this is what Watchtower does. I know, sweetie, I'm not letting you say much. 
<laughs> is they run well, to the officer, they run to law enforcement to protect their, um, you know, from the evil apostates and, you know, who else is trying to get in and attack them, you know, for the memorial. But when it comes to protecting the children in their congregations, do they run to the law enforcement no. officers? No, they won't protect the children. No. Oh, you know, keep it quiet. We don't want to bring reproach to Jehovah, you yeah. know, in the organization. And that is the hypocrisy right there. They have no qualms of paying 35 bucks an hour to get protection for themselves on the memorial well, with an armed officer. Well, you know, this, this becomes so easy to go after Watchtower because, well, you know, let's look at it like this. It's Mark Dice when he talks about little Brian Salta on CNN. He has, it, it's just so easy to debunk the hypocrisy and all the crap that Watchtower throws out there. I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's second nature because, you, like Kim mentioned, they show the military and police officers or the law enforcement gathering up in the field and they've got their you know their machine guns They're ready, the ready to kill them and yet no no weapon formed against them will stand but yet uh, you're going to men with weapons to protect you i mean this is the disconnect this is the disconnect even when it comes to gun control around the world. They pass all these laws, all these legis uh, legislations trying to regulate guns. How do they enforce it? The point of a freaking gun! Do you see the stupidity in this? So Watchtower depicts that God is going to kill men with guns, but yet they call on men with guns to protect them. That's how stupid these men are. Yeah. And like I said, but yet they won't call law enforcement when a child is being raped. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. It's a good thing we had coffee this morning because yeah. this just set us both off. And I can see why this officer was set off also. Because, you know, look at, um, if you go see one of the leaked videos that I just put up on our, you know, RuTube JW leaked videos, you know, one of them was, no weapon will be formed against you. They show the Russian military or police storming the Keaton Hall, and they're armed and all of this. And they're the boogeyman, you know, they're out yeah. to attack Jehovah's peaceful people. But yet, you make them the boogeyman, and then yet you want to hire, you know, the same law enforcement to come protect you with their guns. And why do they have to do this? Well, because, you know, you, you've got guys out there like, I don't know, say, Darrow, that denies what's in front of his eyes. He denies hearing um, well, um, well accustomed to voices, you know, voices that he's used to hearing. You know, he knows what Tony Moore sounds like. He's heard his voice dozens and dozens of, but he'll deny it. Oh, no, no. It, it just, it's just, it's mind boggling. Because the fear that Watchtower lives in right now is real. Because there are so mentally, there are so many mentally disturbed Jehovah's Witnesses out there that have had their families ripped apart, that are that are spiritually ruined. There are those that have been abused. It's just a matter of time that one of them goes into a kingdom hall on the night of a memorial or some special event and open fires. It's no different than what was happening over this past summer uh, in 2018 up in Washington State with those kingdom halls getting burnt. It's no different. It's only a matter of time because this organization is pissing off too many people and they will not change their policies so this is the fear thank god that watchtower is living in because you're seeing it unfold right before your very eyes that they now have to hire armed men with guns to, to protect, protect them 
to do security, and we already know they're locking doors. We you already know, know once that. Once the meeting starts, they lock the door. And now, and now that one uh, XJW is now calling the Kingdom Hall on the night of the memorial. Jerky boy. <laughs> yeah. Funny video. Brilliant. Just brilliant. Funny, funny, funny. Yeah, it's the Jerky Boy YouTube channel. Um, but I just want to mention also that one of our friends um, had gotten a memorial invitation and they called us up and say, um, I know it's been some years since I've been to a memorial, but the address listed on this memorial invitation, I looked it up and it's a lo local funeral home. And they said, is this normal? Is this what Watchtower is doing now? It is now. <laughs> and I said, well, I do know last year's memorial, there was, you know, some held at funeral homes. And I was like, funeral homes? How creepy is that? How can you sit there? Well, I guess it's appropriate when you're holding a black mass. Exactly. But I mean, can you imagine sitting there and saying, oh, in the next room, there's probably dead people. Yeah. Well, you know, if, speaking of black mass... Do I want to go there or not? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Maybe I'll save it for a different video. Yeah, because I want to thank the person too. Thank you so much, sweetie, for sending us the talk for the special talk that was last week. Yeah, let's get to the clip first. This one... <laughs> it's been one of those mornings. This set us off because it was blatant and it was obvious and he actually repeats himself yeah. you know yeah. I didn't edit that he actually repeats himself twice for emphasis so let's play this clip now this leads us to a third key question in our discussion and that question is how how do we get a firm hold on the real life To attain the real life, you must be a baptized Christian servant of Jehovah. To attain the real life, you must be a baptized Christian servant of Jehovah God. So the next time a Jehovah Witness appears at your door and you start, um, you know, preaching about Jesus this and Jesus that and they're all readily agreeable, Remember what you just heard. Unless you become a Jehovah Witness, you will die at Armageddon. Yeah, only baptized Christian servants of Jehovah are going to survive. Now that just completely throws out their little catchphrase, those righteously inclined will survive. That's bullshit when it gets behind closed doors with these guys. This issue is done because we all hear it in their special talk of the memorial season 2019 unless you are only baptized christian servants of jehovah that's jehovah's witnesses so for the rest of the world whether you're a born again christian whether you're a muslim whether, whether i don't give a crap what your religion is i don't care in the minds of these jehovah's witnesses their god at armageddon you are dead meat. This is how they think. This is how they indoctrinate. This is how they ruin people's lives. Yeah, because those leaving have this in their minds that they're going to die at Armageddon. Yeah, so you know what? If I'm going to die at Armageddon, I'm going to leave the truth and I'm going to go have all kinds of unprotected sex. I'm going to do all kinds of drugs. I'm going to drink myself into a stupor every freaking night because Jehovah's going to kill me anyways. See, this is what they're implanting in your minds. So if you're somebody who's not a Jehovah's Witness, a Jehovah's Witness, my God, run and run like hell. Run faster than Forrest Gump can ever run because it will destroy your mind. So are we ready to bring out this well, little gem that somebody else sent us well, here's, on the New World Translation? Here's, here's the thing. They don't, only, they don't only destroy your mind when you're sitting in the kingdom hall. They even manage to change, you know, what most people view as the unerring word of God. It, you know, like, you know, God gives them permission to change it. 
Yeah. So let's go to the new silver Bible here and let's look up Isaiah 53:10. But it was Jehovah's will to crush him and let him become sick. If you will present his life as a guilt offering, he will see his offspring, he will prolong his days, and through him the delight of Jehovah will have success. Now, <laughs> in the context, this is talking about the um, prophecy of the Messiah coming. But, but no it ain't. It, it can't be because we all know that as fully indoctrinated Christians, Jesus never had children. Well, you know, unless you're, unless you're that one early, early group of Christians that got murdered for this idea. Well, when you look this up in other Bibles, it says seed. You know, seed. his seed will bruise you in the head and yeah. his will, you know, bruise you in the heel. But, his seed. But offspring is definitely referring to children, isn't it? See? But the point that we want to focus on is that when you get to the older New World Trash translation, listen to how they change the words. Okay, and like I said, I've got the 1984. We'll see here at the top. Messiah's appearance and his death and burial. Right, the ransom, the barren woman. <laughs> Isaiah 53.10 But Jehovah himself took delight in crushing him he made him sick if you will set his soul as a guilt offering he will see his offspring he will prolong his days and in his hand is what hand what is the delight of Jehovah will succeed hmm there's an asterisk I wonder what that means his soul <laughs> his soul they don't believe in souls they don't believe in a soul surviving death <laughs> but see the point is is that the old one says that Jehovah took delight. He enjoyed in it. Crushing him. And crushing him. They had to take it out of here. Because too many people are reading it. Too many people are educating themselves. And they see the nonsense that's associated with religion. And they're manipulating and misuse of this book perhaps. Um, I seem to be thinking of another scripture. Can you read my mind? Yeah, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Because, see, you just read that Jehovah took delight. He enjoyed crushing. And in this case, it would be his only begotten son. He took delight in crushing him. That's the disturbing part. Okay, 2 Peter 3, 9. Jehovah is not slow respecting his promise, as some people consider slowness, but he is patient with you because he does not desire any to be destroyed, but he desires all to attain to repentance. So the wow. God of the New Testament doesn't desire to kill anybody, but yet... The God of the Old Testament desires in crushing people. Takes delight in crushing Jesus. Yes. Yes. Now, what I'm going to do next is going to cause a huge. <laughs> Wait for it. A huge disconnect. So, if you're the type of person that don't want to be disconnected. Or triggered. Or triggered, I would suggest you shut this off right now because this is not going to be in your favor. Okay. I want to go to uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 14. Okay. Now, you Jehovah's Witnesses are familiar with this. And no one, this is Paul writing, and no wonder for Satan keeps transforming himself into an angel of light. It is therefore nothing great if his ministers also keep transforming themselves into ministers of righteousness, but their end shall be according to their works. Okay, so in the mind of Jehovah's Witnesses, we all know that Satan transforms himself into an angel of light, and we all know that Satan is the god of this system of things. 
which includes the political world, which includes the um, media, media, the economic world, everything. Religion. Satan is the ruler of this system of things. Now, let's go to my second scripture I have prepared for you. John 14, 30. And that scripture says, now this is Jesus speaking, I shall not speak much with you anymore. For the ruler, Satan, Satan, for the ruler of this world is coming. And he has no hold on me. Now you've got Satan, the god of the system. Now he's the ruler, in Jesus' own words, the ruler of this world. He is the god of this world world little g but in order for the world to know that i love the father wait a minute father the ruler of the world it, it's like he's making a separation isn't it there is two separate. it's almost like there's a separate reading with understanding it's what i've been talking about okay uh even as the father has given me commandment to do so i am doing get up and let us go from here but the key point is that the ruler of this world, the ruler of this system. Now let's go to John chapter 12, verse 31. Now there is a judging of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. Do you guys want to know the name of this ruler, Jehovah's Witnesses? Go get your Bibles and read Psalms 83.18. I'll read that for you, dear. We all know this by heart. That people may know that you, whose name is Jehovah, you alone are the Most High over all the earth. How about the ruler of the earth, the God of the system? I've been reading the Nag Hammadi. Why does the Nag Hammadi say that the Father, the Almighty God, Big G, is ruler or in control of all? Which would all the universe? The universe. The source of everything over all. You see the difference? See, this book ruler tells you. Over all the that most high over all jehovah only rules over the earth and that's why the earth is in the state that it is in today because that god that rules this world the god of this system of things is an evil god little g now, I just want to mention that I did bring this question, you know, up to a couple of Christian friends of mine. And they sent me to websites, Christian websites, that was why God, Almighty God, Big G, allows Satan to do this. You know, allows Satan authority over the earth. And it was the usual, you know, Christian beliefs and stuff. It didn't answer this question. Didn't answer it. It right. didn't answer any of this. And the thing is, these haven't been tampered with. Right. These haven't been for changed. For thousands of years. You think about the original writings of Psalms 83, 18. Supposedly the Tetragrammaton was there. But then here comes the King, the King Jamesers, <coughs> and they change it to capital L-O-R-D to kind of distract, perhaps. And then here comes Watchtower saying, well, it's, you know, we're not going to use the name Yahweh. We're going to go with the more familiar term, Jehovah. Now, what's interesting is, many of you know, we have about 30 different translations. And I've looked this up in several. A lot of your Catholic Bibles don't even have 8318. They stop at, like, verses previous. And there was even one, if I remember correctly, one even had a verse 19. Well, I was going to say, some of them have a verse 19, and this is verse 19, because there's a few extra ones there's in there. added scriptures. So which one do you believe? Yeah. I don't know. I don't have the answers. 
but inquiring minds. I don't have the answers. I don't know. I don't know which one is right. I don't know if any of these are correct. And if you're going to sit here and pretend you absolutely know, then someone's going to put a question out there that really um, will cause a disconnect. Okay. Short circuit. Yes. <laughs> I can't handle this. <laughs> I can't handle this. But see, read with discernment. Understand that the Bible should be answering itself, shouldn't it? How many times have us ex-Jehovah's Witnesses had said this? And it's hiding in plain sight. If Satan is the God of this world, the God of this earth, then he would be the most high over the earth. Now I just wanted to mention, going back to the Isaiah 53.10, you know, um, the old one says that Jehovah himself took delight in crushing him. So it was Jehovah himself that took delight in crushing him, but yet in the new silver one it says it was Jehovah's will. Yeah. So would that be his Holy Spirit? But but then to again, crush him? yeah. But then again, go back to uh, the first prophecy in you know Genesis three fifteen. See, Satan would be crushed in the head, or Satan would also deal a blow to Jesus Christ, and Satan would take delight in that, wouldn't he? Yeah. So <laughs> is it Satan himself who took delight in crushing Jesus and allowed so, to die? So again. Who is Jehovah that I should obey his voice? <laughs> oh, there's going to be videos and keyboards oh, lighting up over this one. Hey, predictable behavior. <laughs> okay. Love you guys. <laughs> yes. Now, we got uh, something a couple weeks ago that I, we wanted to do a video on it, and we just kind of got, it kind of got lost underneath the shuffle of paperwork. It here. got lost on my desk. But our daughter uh, sent this to us. It was an article she came across on Islam. Now keep in mind, it's not just Christian believing people that are waking up. It's happening in other religions. And one of these is Islam. Okay. One of the questions that Kim and I get asked, well, we used to get asked more frequently, frequently than we get asked now, is how come when Jehovah's Witnesses wake up, they become atheists? Because they do their study, they do their research, and they begin to think for themselves. It's also happening in Islam. So this source is from NBC News. And, and I'll put the link to the article down below. Yeah. It starts out, Fadi does not believe in God, and he is terrified. In a Baghdad cafe, the medical student student sits far from other customers. A glance over the over his shoulder to make sure nobody is watching and listening. I am afraid of being discovered. Then I would be killed. He says in a voice that really raises above a whisper. This may also harm my family, although none of them know that I do not believe. Fadi, 23, says that he could be targeted for believing that God and all of the world uh, religions are human inventions. So see, it's not just us people leaving the Christian religions saying that it's a human invention. People that are leaving Islam are coming to the same conclusions. Okay. Uh, human inventions. You want me to read this? To avoid detection, he deletes all searches on his computer and cell phone. Hmm. Sounds like uh, he's an apost apostate to the Islamic religion. Like all of the 20 atheists, NBC news spoke to, Fadi asked to be identified by a pseudium to avoid being targeted by militias or police. Although Islam is the state religion and it is against the law to slander or insult any faith, atheism itself is not illegal in Iraq, according to legal expert Ali al Tim Timami. Uh, and, uh, and antidotal evidence suggests a small but growing community of Iraq, Iraqi agnostics and atheists in the Muslim-majority country. 
One Facebook page called Iraq's Agnostics and Atheists has nearly 13,000 likes and 17,000 followers. But power, violence, and religion are a toxic mix. Many of Iraq's unbelievers have been forced underground as, um, as religious hardliners battle for control of the young democracy, which is struggling to balance the demands of both Sunnis and Shiites, plus smaller ethnic and religious communities. Hmm, sounds like religion in the United States and Islam share one thing in common. People are sick and tired of the bullshit. Thank you for watching and thank you everybody for your wonderful comments. Um, I just wanted to mention real quick that if you put a link to anything in your comment under our videos, it automatically goes to a spam folder and I'm trying to approve all those messages, but it's taken me a long time because there's like 2,000, you know, in that folder and I can only do like 100 or 200 at a time. So I am trying to clean that out and I am approving all of them, you know, I'm not deleting any of them, but it's just going to take me a while. And, uh... So thank you for watching and thank you everybody for, you know, giving all this information to us. And I've had a couple of people tell me now that they're going to try to get the memorial talk to me that was given because it was a doozy too. <laughs> but the point is, is this little clip from the special talk was disturbing and we know that's how Jehovah's Witnesses really feel. Yep. That's how they really think. Um, even our own moms believe that we're going to be destroyed at Armageddon because we have left. And I'm going to put the link down below to all of these things that we have mentioned. Okay. Thanks for watching. And um, I hope the whole Psalms 83:18 thing really gives you pause to think a little bit. Connect some more dots. Yeah. That was interesting. It was interesting. So change a couple of words and it changes the whole meaning, but you put the proper words in the proper place and now you can connect and see more clearly what's going on. Yeah. Well the thing is, is when you reread that scripture and it's like, wait a minute, over the earth. It should be over the universe. All the over universe. everything. Everything. So who really is this little G God Jehovah? Yeah. I gotta wonder. You know, especially when he takes delight in crushing Jesus. Mm-hmm. You know, the Messiah. <laughs> Makes you wonder. It's been right there all along, friends. <laughs> all along. You have a wonderful week, and we love you. Bye. Bye.